Alrighty, we are going to jump through chapter one really quickly. So here it is, solving equations. Um, basically, the recipe is to clean up the equation and undo the operations until your desired variable is isolated. So uh, this is kind of a step by step, but to be honest, just like cooking, if you follow the step by step every single time, you will get a solution, but it might not be the most efficient way. So you can use this as kind of a recipe, but use your better judgment too. Okay, and say, you know what, I think it would be faster to do this one, this other thing. So I'm putting this up here as an example, but I might not even stick to it myself. So <laughs> that said, if you're having trouble, follow the list. Okay. Solving equations. Let's do some examples. Oh boy, first I see that I have a variable on both sides. I'm going to solve for x unless it says otherwise. So um, I see that I have a variable on both sides, and I would like to isolate that x, which means I need to get it all on one side of the equation. So I think I'm going to go ahead and distribute first. So I have 5 plus 3 times 2x is 6x minus 3 times 1 is 3 equals 4x plus 2. Um, I'm going to get all my x's onto this side and all my constants onto that side just because I see that 6x is bigger than 4x. I'm going to move the little one so that I don't have a negative coefficient because I'm lazy. Alrighty, take away 4x, take away 4x. Uh, let's see, so that gives me 2x. And I've got, bye bye, 2 over here. I'm also going to, in the same fell swoop, do 5, take away 3 is 2. So 2x plus 2 equals 2, which means that I'm going to take away 2 from both sides. 2x equals 0. Divide both sides by 2. x equals 0. Yes, x or 0 is a number 2 also. So let me... Um, <laughs> Let me plug that in and see what we get. 5 plus, I'm going to start on the inside, 2 times 0 is 0, minus 1 is negative 1, times 3 is negative 3, plus 5 would give me, neg uh, would give me 2. 4 times 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. All right, hey, my answer checks out. Excellent. Here, I have two variables. Um, it's already solved for y, right? y is isolated. Just for giggles, I'm going to isolate x. So let's see. Ew, I have, I have x on the top and the bottom of this fraction. That's mean and cruel. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by x plus 2. So I have y times x plus 2 equals x plus 1. I'm going to distribute my y. So I have um, x times y plus 2y equals x plus 1. I'm going to subtract an x from both sides. So I have x, y, plus 2y minus x equals 1. And I'm going to take away 2y from both sides. So x, y minus x equals 1 minus 2y. This is where the sneakiness comes in. These both have x in them, so I'm going to factor out x. I'm going to factor out x, so I have x times y minus, and this is x times 1, equals 1 minus 2y. And now I'm just going to divide both sides by y minus 1, so x equals 1 minus 2y divided by y minus 1. That was sneaky and awesome, huh? Okay, then... Inequalities. Inequalities are just like equations. The only difference is you have inequality symbols instead of equal signs. And if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you just have to remember to flip it so a less than becomes a greater than and vice versa. So let's see. I have 4x plus 6 is less than or equal to 3x minus 5. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. I get x plus 6 is less than or equal to negative 5. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. I get x is less than or equal to negative 11. 
over here, oh my gosh, I have two inequality signs. No big deal, just do the same thing. Here you do the same thing to both sides, here you do the same thing to all three sides, or however many sides you end up having. So in order to isolate x in this term, I'm going to multiply by 3. But what I do in here, I have to do to both of the other sides. So negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. 3 is a positive number, so I don't need to worry about flipping my inequality. Those cancel. When I say those cancel, I'm not saying they equal 0, by the way. Dividing by 3 and multiplying by 3, you end up with 1. So 6 minus 2x is less than 4 times 3 is 12. Now I'm going to subtract a 6 from all three sides. <laughs> so negative 12 is less than negative 2x is less than 6. And now I need to divide everything by negative 2. Negative 12 divided by negative 2 is positive 6 x and 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. Since I divided by a negative number, I need to flip my inequality symbols, which is good because otherwise I would be saying that 6 is less than negative 3, which is obviously untrue, but 6 is greater than x is greater than negative 3. And sometimes we like to rewrite that so that the smaller number is to the left, so negative 3 is less than x is less than 6. Single variable inequalities get graphed on a number line. So for example, if I have x is greater than or equal to 2, since it's or equal to, I'm going to use a closed circle which means I draw a circle on two and I color it in. And then you have kind of your choice of options. We need to indicate all the numbers that are bigger than two. So for example, three is bigger than two, four is bigger than two. Uh, when I was in algebra, I learned to do this to indicate bigger than, greater than, if I'm being proper. However, I've seen a lot of people like to draw it this way. Both of those are acceptable. Don't do both, because what I've got right now looks really dumb. <laughs> Pick one or the other. All right. Um, normally, you don't do these all on the same number line. You would you would do a separate one, but that's okay. Just for giggles, I'm going to do a second one on this number line. Uh, how about m is less than negative one? So I would put an open circle on negative one, and I would draw in the negative direction, or I could scribble, whichever one makes you happy. All right. Now. As far as two variables, you would graph that on a coordinate plane. So if I had, for example, y is less than x plus 1, what I would do is I would pretend that I'm graphing the line y equals x plus 1. So I would begin at 1, and I would go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, and I'd draw a bunch of dots so that I can connect my dots. But I would then look at my inequality symbol, and since this is strictly less than, I'm going to connect this with a dotted line. Sort of like that. You'll learn that I'm really bad at drawing lines, so that's pretty good for me. <laughs> okay, and then I need to color the side that is true. So, y is less than x plus 1. Um, now, a shortcut is if it is in function, if it's in function form where y is isolated, less than means colored down and greater than means color up. But just to be positive, I'm going to pick a point and test it. So I want to color it if it makes the inequality true. If it's ever an option, I like to pick the point 0, 0 because math is really easy with 0. So 0 is less than 0 plus 1. That is true. So I'm going to color that point 0, 0. And I'm also going to color all of its neighbors. Now, we frequently do graph two inequalities on the same coordinate plane if we have a system of linear inequalities. So how about I add another? Let's say that. Um, uh, let's do x is greater than or equal to negative 1. 
So I would take the line x equals negative 1, which happens here and here and here and here, all these points where x equals negative 1, and I'm going to connect the dots with a solid line. Okay, there's my solid line. Now, I need the, the x's that are greater than negative 1. And um, so, for example, 0 is greater than negative 1. So I'm going to color that in. Now, if I were doing a system of linear inequalities, I would want the spot where both of these overlap. And since you watched me do this, it's pretty clear which one is which, right? Um, this is the area where all three of these overlap. However, if you imagine three or four of these all graphed on the same coordinate plane, figuring out where all four overlap, if they even do, can be kind of challenging. So some ways that we've developed to handle that. First of all, color. Color is br brilliant, beautiful, fantastic. If you have colored pencils, it's often really nice to graph your inequality in colored pencil, kind of shade lightly, and then you'll be able to see where they overlap. If all you've got is a pencil, you can make, um, instead of shading it in completely like I did, instead you can draw lines perpendicular to your inequality line. And then what you're looking for, if you want the area of overlap, is the area that has plaid, like a shirt, right? or a skirt. So here would be the plaid area. Now in some other countries, and this actually makes a lot of sense, what they do is they shade the side that's not true. So if um, this line is, what is this line? Let's see, we have a line y is greater than negative x. That would be this line here. So I would shade all the things that aren't greater than negative x instead of the things that are greater than negative x. What that does is it leaves behind an empty area, and that would be the area that's true. So if you've seen this before, it's, it's actually, it makes a lot of sense. Unfortunately, if you do this on a test or like the SAT, you will fail. So I'm pointing it out because you might have seen it before and it's kind of awesome, but unfortunately, don't, don't do that. Just be aware that it's there and it's kind of cool. But either use color or draw your lines perpendicular, draw some lines perpendicular to your inequality line, and that's how we're going to do it in this class.